Thank you. There you go, you're on. I'm on? Oh, oh okay. Uh, notice is hereby given that the Animal Advisory Board of the City of Alpine, Texas will hold a meeting at 6 p.m. on Tuesday, February 8th, 2022, at the City Council Chambers, which is where we are, uh, located at 803 West Holland Avenue. Uh, we don't have anybody on Zoom. The attached agenda was posted at 2 p.m. on February 4th. And let's see what else I have to remain. It remained so posted for at least 72 hours preceding the scheduled time of said meeting. The facility is wheelchair accessible. Uh, and I think that's all I have to read. So I'm calling this meeting to order at 5.59. And we do have a determination of quorum and I just read the proof of notice. Uh, we do have time for public comments. Is anybody here wanting to make public comments? Okay, Thank you. all right. And uh, did everybody get a chance to see the uh, minutes of the previous meeting? Yes. Okay. Anybody wanna make an emotion? I'll make a motion. Okay, do I have a second? I'll second. All right. And that was from July 1st, 2021. All right, uh, our first item is uh, Adam, Alpine Animal Service update. Vote on so, thank you, my man. Uh, all in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. I'm just gonna skip right over that because I didn't want to give oh, Jennifer no. enough time Megan to get it up. it into my head how to do this. Say, I, Megan, say. <laughs> You're my parliamentarian now. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> so our first item, if I talk really slow, is the Alpine Animal oh. Service 2021 update. And if she's still pulling it up, I have something else I can talk about real quick. Yes, she is. Um, we have been asked the Alpine Animal Advisory Board. I say AAB so much that I have to mm -hmm. slow down and say Alpine Animal Advisory Board to make a presentation to City Council on the 15th. And I don't know if it was in your packet. I don't think it was, but we're gonna quickly go through some of the things that we did before. Um, I uh, certainly gonna talk about our board members, everybody who is here talk about why we're here, what's in the ordinance and what our duties are, and then kind of go over what we've done in the past couple of years. Uh, 2020, way back in 2020, we finally passed the dangerous dog and animal ordinances. And I swore that was gonna be put on my tombstone. She passed it. Anyway, that uh, was the determination of what a dangerous dog was. Uh, it talked about restraint requirements, appeal process, and it did name that the owner liability for class A and B misdemeanor remedies. Recording in progress. Then in 2021. I don't know if it's me making that noise or not. Okay. All right. So in 2021, uh, we passed wildlife feeding. Uh, the City of Alpine, the Texas Parks and Wildlife Department finds that discouraging the artificial, artificial feeding of wildlife is in the best interest of the health, safety, and welfare of the community and the wildlife population. Feeding of wildlife is prohibited. Uh, and that passed and we didn't get a lot of pushback on that. Uh, we also passed the membership updated to remove specific ward assignments and included residents within 10 miles outside of the city limits. And finally, the last thing we did in July was established an ordinance. To establish standards for the management of feral cats and provide for the minimization and abatement of nuisances. So that's what we've done in the past two years. What's upcoming and we're gonna talk about tonight is uh, impoundment and destruction and tethering. Now we did pass that in 2019 and went through our first reading. Uh, COVID hit and it went away. It just didn't happen. So we're gonna review it now looking at the February 8th. We're gonna do it tonight looking at the Texas State Law Subchapter E Section 821.02, which talks a little bit more about tethering. And so uh, chains have been outlawed. outlawed. <laughs> made the restraint of each dog in violation a separate offense and updated class B and C misdemeanor. 
And that's what I'm gonna tell the city council, unless there's something else you all think I need to be telling them. Anything else? Okay. And the very last thing is, I was gonna make sure they know that we, Alpine Animal Services has PSAs on the Alpine radio and you can read them all on the City of Alpine website. So that's it. This is the short ever done. Right. So look, remember that when you come to court. Yeah. I will, don't worry. <laughs> I'm not going to stand up there and make a whole big thing out of this. Well, I told him some gentleman came from the library. And it was lovely. And I mean, he gave a detail. Yeah. Three years. And I, I, I think I dozed off. I, uh, I do, I'm not sure. because <laughs> And it was great. And they've done massive amounts of things. This but wildlife need... feeding, though, it needs to be on here again. I, I, I could tell you, I know people in my neighborhood that are still doing it. Oh, they, what, what is that? And I feel sorry for them, too. But You mean that they shouldn't be, they are doing it, and you want them to be able to do no, it? No, I don't. Not. Yeah. Oh. But what's the deterrent? Uh, the deterrent is enforcement. I, well, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah. I mean, what's the, what's the bite in the law? Yeah, that's the bite. <laughs> And uh, Jennifer, I don't know, the way that you implemented it was, it was prohibited. We kind of kept it low and quiet mm -hmm. and then it's time to start enforcing. I think that's mm -hmm. what you were planning. Yeah, I mean, we, we did do a PSA on that mm -hmm. um, so that the ordinance was out there. Um, for you need people. to remind everybody because now, you know, we've had no rain, we've had no, mm -hmm. and I understand they're hungry, but I understand that they need to be out in the wild, not. But it's my, a ticket. Not maybe. in my front. All it is is a right. ticket. It's not class you know, A, class B misdemeanor. No, right. but what's the fine associated with the ticket? I think it depends on the municipal judge. I mean, are people just collecting them and putting them on their wall, or? Oh um, no, no. There's hearings now happening. Okay. Yeah. There should be there should be um, a, a a rate for whatever that citation is. So. Yeah. Yeah. Now people can still feed the birds. I'm okay with birds. Birds aren't going to kill my dog. No, they're not. They're not. Well, they might. You've got a little dog. Well, the deer, <laughs> and really, I mean, when I have to face them down, and I know their eyes, and I see them later on the street, and, and they look at me like, oh, that's that lady. I, I'm, I'm, <laughs> they're just not going to hurt her, and I'll just, I have insurance. I'll take it on. Uh, the PSA was out there for about 15 days, okay. uh, and we could certainly run it again if we had to i'm sure yeah was that one with the radio ad too yeah yeah that was oh dear oh dear yeah i, I heard, heard that dear. yeah that that was that one <laughs> <laughs> i tried to emphasize the oh dear yeah. <laughs> uh i do notice when i'm driving back um, from fort davis that uh there's not as many on 118 right there as there used to be no they've moved over by my house <laughs> <laughs> you are they're over there that subdivision behind your office, mm -hmm. have you ever driven back there? Mm -hmm. There is a herd. No, well, the reason why the herd is there is because of the person that's on the road that feeds them. Yeah, well, they, of course, this is outside city limits. You can't do anything. But mm -hmm. I mean, I, I mean, this was, it was like a wildlife show. Yeah. Yeah. So, and, and there's another individual as you go into town there on the right, and there's some deer that get hit and so forth. Yeah. Not there's, just in front of the hospital. Um, it's further down by um, White House Inn yeah. and so forth. I don't think she's feeding quite as much. Mama got hurt. Oh, dear. <laughs> yes, Mama you... did get hurt. <laughs> well, not by the deer. No. Uh, are you ready, Jennifer? Yep. As long as these slides work, I should be just Okay. Fine. All right. Good. <laughs> so this is um, kind of just a, it's a reduced <laughs> version of my... Um, my presentation to council next Tuesday. So this has same similar information, not maybe not as much information. Um, I just wanted to give some facts about our year, um, 2021 year, um, on intakes and outcomes and um, and all that. So, but Judy, don't they get to see? That they have one right there. Oh, okay. Uh. okay. No, uh, I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> it's a secret. So it's kind of hard to see in it. Um, stray intakes, we uh, we intake uh, just strays, uh, 361. Um, 123 were cats, non-ferals. Uh, 236 were dogs, one chicken and one duck. 
Um, May and June were the busiest for our cats, which is kind of around where our kitten season is. Uh, July, August, September was busiest for dogs. Um, where these, mainly where these animals were found, uh, majority of them were in four and two, and that's for cats and dogs. Um, let's see here. This is our feral cat intake. We have a good, um, we can kind of see um, between 2019 and 2021 where our numbers are on our little graph here. Um, we took in, um, we see, it seems like we're on, on the decline with our feral um, cat intake. Um, we did have a little bit of a spike in the third quarter of 2021, um, but altogether in um, 2020 or 2019, we had 118 come in, and then we saw a dramatic decrease to 113 in 2020, and then 123, which is not too much of a difference from 2021 um, and 2020 or 2020 and 2021. It's a lot of numbers. Let me uh, let me just add to that. Mm -hmm. um, we too, we did 223 in 2021 feral cat sterilizations here and now. Here are my next slide. Oh. <laughs> You're taking her thunder. Sorry. <laughs> her family didn't hear that. Okay. Yeah, y'all didn't hear that. Sorry. What did, how do we do? <laughs> well, uh, let's see. Um, so the TNR stats were pro are provided by Big Ben Pets. Um, the chart shows for 2020 and 2021, um, there was 173 um, total uh, TNR cats spayed or neutered. Um, 2021 was 197. Most of our TNR we're seeing is also in two and four wards. Very interesting. I'm going to be using that. What does that mean? Several times. Where's two and four? Two and not four. Not mine, not one. <laughs> Two and four. Um, the deer and, ran all out of them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Two and four. There. Um, four is. There's a lot of four over here, and a lot of two over here, and four kind of pops, pops up a little bit into, um, in the middle of town, and two also kind of does. It's, it's the map is very weird. I'd definitely go and and take a look at it. But, yeah. Um, yeah. It's that's a lot of this side of town. And and I will add that even though it's that side of town, people are willing to get the cat sterilized. They didn't like they're like, no, don't come near us. They're they're willing to do it. Is that where all the colonies mm -hmm. are? Most of them. We, Most of them. We have about 50 colonies. They're not all there. Um, surrenders, we had 96 surrenders, eight cats and 88 dogs. Um, 32 of those dogs were a result from a hoarding case. Um, and four um, were also um, surrendered due to bite incidences. This is a lot. Um, that's not normal. But we've, when you run into a hoarding case, that's just kind of what happens. Oops. How big was the house? It was a trailer. <laughs> it wasn't a house. So. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. There we go. Okay, um, other intakes. So um, we had four dogs brought in due to owner passing away, three dogs and two cats brought in due to having uh, owner having a medical emergency, 15 dogs brought in due to owner arrest, six dogs brought in for quarantine, five dogs brought in uh, for holding during a search warrant, five puppies were born in care, 14 dogs and thir three cats were brought into another um, hoarding situation from another hoarding situation which was a seizure warrant. Uh, one dog and one cat were returned to shelter after previous seizure warrant non-compliance. One dog returned due to adopter not being honest on an application, and one cat was uh, returned out from a partner rescue at home because it had ringworm. Jennifer, so. is that the least amount of puppies you've had born? Do you know? Have you? We've had zero. Well, I meant <laughs> the five puppies that we're showing here. Yes. But is that the least? You've had zero before? No oh, yeah. We don't always have litters born at the shelter. Okay. Yeah. We've had more than five too. Most definitely. Yeah. What did the adopted up about? Um, it kind of tied into the um the seizure warrant. Um the um the people who were told they couldn't get their animals back um had a friend come up and adopt one of the animals. Oh. So that's that's what happened. Um return to owner. So I told you earlier, 100, or we had uh, 361 strays um, come in, um, and we had 220 of them return to owner. So it's a it's over 50 percent. Obviously, we'd like to see more than than that number. Um, one thing that's you know always this is common is um, our cats uh, intakes were 123, and only 35 were returned. 
Um, I'd like to see our cat return to owners increase. Um, I'm hoping that with pushing microchips, doing this TNR, um, maybe we're, and, you know, const we, we constantly post those found cats on, online too. It's just getting people um, to realize that their cats can come home. They just got to come pick them up from the shelter. Um, 35 is actually better than previous years. We've had, um, we've had years where they're only a handful, nine, 10, maybe get reclaimed and the numbers are still high like that. Um, out of the dogs, there's 236 dogs that came in astray, 185 are returned. Um, so we have a better turnaround with, with dogs that come in. Um, three dogs were returned after their quarantine, uh, six dogs and one cat returned after a hearing, four dogs returned uh, to friend or family um, after the owner passed away, 15 dogs returned to, to owner or relative after um, the owner was arrested, five dogs returned after being held for a search warrant. That dog's smiling. Yes, <laughs> that's Evie. She's very sweet. Um, she was actually one of the dogs from our 35. Yeah. 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 Um, adoptions, we had 124 adoptions, 77 were cats, 47 were dogs, one was a chicken, actually went to one of our officers, um, and only five animals were returned after adoption, one cat and four dogs. And that, that, that's, that happens. I mean, we don't want to, obviously we don't want to see anybody come back, but, um, sometimes they just don't mix in the, in the home. So not too bad. And those animals end up getting transported or readopted anyway. So, uh, transports. Um, we transported 98 animals to other rescues, uh, 20 cats, and 78 dogs. Um, we would not be able to um, have the no kill or the low kill status that we do without transports. It just doesn't, we would not be able to ad adopt 98 other animals out without in, in a tiny community like this. So, transport, it really does make the dream work. Humane Society helps, um, Underground Dog Rescue helps, Jeffrey Homer Bound Pets helps us with that. So um, it takes it takes a lot of people to make that happen. Um, it does need to continue um, if our numbers are still gonna be the way that they are. So this is a, a happy picture of one of ours that went to Portland. <laughs> okay, other outcomes. Um, so these are you know not the not the good outcomes that we want to hear about, but uh, we did have four puppies uh, died uh, due to parvo. It was not the ones that were born at the shelter. Um, one cat due to illness, one kitten um, from one of the seizure warrants due to medical issues, one kitten due to medical issues, and then one kitten due to illness, or three kittens due to illness, excuse me. Uh, euthanized for, um, we had one cat for medical reasons, one dog for county, uh, from the county due to a bite incident, three dogs uh, from city due to a bite incident, or different bite incidences, uh, one due to aggressive behavior, and then um, one dog uh, was surrendered due to aggressive behavior um, in the home. Um, we also had a kitten um, euthanized due to illness uh, and a senior cat that had to be put down due to fail failure to thrive. So not our favorite outcomes, but it does you know, show you that it's low numbers with those kind of outcomes is what we wanna see. Um, total shelter counts. I thought this was kind of interesting. Um, so uh, January 1st, um, we had 20 cats and 25 dogs in our shelter. And then by, by December 31st, we had 20 cats and 18 dogs in our shelter. Um, you can kind of see where our peak is. That, that darker green line is at the top is uh, overall animals in our shelter. You can see where our busiest uh, um, times was. That was also a time where we had um, one hoarder case and then boom, another hoarder case. So um, we actually had, a, let's see, the most animals that we had at one time in the shelter was 79 and the least was 23. 79 is too much. <laughs> That's a lot. That's a lot for our tiny shelter. So we were, we were bursting at the seams, but luckily with transports, with adoptions, with networking, with all our partners, we got them out really quickly. You can see the drop immediately after August, September just went. So. And interesting enough, last year, it was April 27th. I have it burned in my memory before we first got our first kitten in. Mm -hmm. And then we had them in December. Oh, well. Um, animal bites. Um, we had um, 46 total animal bites um, in the city. Um, yeah. <laughs> 
I don't, you know, I don't know. Go on. Yeah, <laughs> go on. <laughs> <laughs> so it, what, what this really tells us is that any that my graph kind of shows where the, you know, the, the percentages of where the wards, came, um, the bites happened, um, and then kind of where our hot season was um, in regards to that in the summertime. Um, so not necessarily these were all just random acts of animals running loose. This, these are also instances where people maybe mishandled their own pets or they were trying to help you know, quite kindly help a pet out in the public and they made a mistake. Um, there were some bites at the shelter that shouldn't have happened. Um, so things like things like that are just all included in this. Um, but it, it was very interesting to see that two and four were, were hot Again, spots. Yeah. Where the animals are. Yeah, it does. I mean, it does are show that we need wards. Um, not necessarily. I don't know. No, no, no. Okay. They're, just, all, they're all about the same, but yeah, I would say so. Um, maybe ward five, just because it's so spread out, maybe it's a little less populated, but I don't know. Um, it does, it does show us that we need to um, focus our um, our community outreach in two and four, and that's, I mean, that's going to be the big deal. So we're there. Yep. Um, okay, so uh, citations issued. Um, we issued 130 citations. Um, majority, it's it's always running at large. So that's you can see over about almost half of our um, our our citations that were issued were those. And then it's no chip and no license are usually our our other our other big ones. So um, the ordinances that we're passing through here, we're, we're not using a whole lot in our you know, citation writing, for, perhaps, but um, neglect, um, that, that was a big one that we used for some reason last year. Um, and, uh, you know, this is kind of showing how important it is for our, um, our ordinances to be um, up to date because we, we are writing such and things. Jennifer knows those ordinances. I'm always very impressed because I start to read them and I go, okay, put on my legalese. Mm -hmm. And she can tell you right where it is and what needs to happen. I but try. well, I mean, and then she has to communicate it with the animal patrol officers. Yeah. Um, let's see. So oh, something else I was gonna mention I didn't put on the slide was um uh, I did start in uh animal education course that's going to be happening once a month mm -hmm. and it will be um the i'm going to try and schedule it the week after um our court hearing so we, we usually do the court hearings the third week of the month and then the fourth week will be the um animal control course um well it's not animal control course animal um education course it's um basically going over um just basic animal care um and um, our laws, um, the five freedoms. Um, so um, I think it's going to be good. I had one student last month. Um, they've promoted it a little bit more for this next month. So I'll see if I have a little bit more of a class. If anybody's interested in coming, um, you just go and sign up with the court clerk. And is it court you. ordered for some of the people? It is court ordered. So that's why we designed it so that people are, that are getting these citations um, can be, um, requested to come to the course um, through the judge. So and if they don't come, there's no yeah, teeth. There's no teeth. Yeah. yeah. But no, I mean, you know, compliance, mm -hmm. give away free stuff. <laughs> give them a kitten. No. <laughs> give them a kitten. No. Yeah. <laughs> or chocolate. <laughs> Either one. Sorry, that was, that was my, uh, my what run are the through, five freedoms? I run through before council. Oh, the five, five freedoms are... Freedom, hunger, freedom, uh, hunger and thirst, freedom of um, moving around, moving around, yeah. uh, displaying normal behavior. You put me on the spot. I'm having and a really I'm sorry. Hard <laughs> um, <laughs> free, um, well, tell us all when you I'm come so to cancel. I'm so sorry. You put me on the spot. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm having a really my bad dog has so. them. Whatever they are, Penny Lane has them. I yes. think so. Penny yeah. has a few more. It's than the class. I, I apologize that I'm fried and I should have. Been able to answer that question. Well, if you bring it up at council, you'll know to hand it. God, I should have brought my paperwork. Yeah. <laughs> yeah write it down because you know I'm an ash. Does anybody okay. have some questions, any more questions? Comments? Oh, you always do a good presentation. Thank you. I, I, I like that I got a practice round this time. 
Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I get kind of nervous when I go. Okay. Too detailed, not detailed enough. That oh, sounds great. Okay. Thank you. All right. It'll be more detailed, actually. I'm, I have some but other things. Make it longer, you know. I like four minutes or less. Four minutes or less. Okay. <laughs> I'll let Gio know to put some of those slides out. We're timer. We're still trying to get a dumpster surface. So yeah. Uh, questions. <laughs> Yes, good. <laughs> no, that's it. That's the last slide show. Questions. <laughs> All right. We're going to move to the action items. Um, discuss, consider, and take appropriate action to make recommendation to City Council on the proposed impoundment and destruction ordinance. Now, I'll try to remember this. We actually have been through this. Lauren and Mary and I and Pat, probably, I think you all have seen it. And it is um, section 10118F. And it says if any animal removed from a home or vehicle due to search and seizure or arrest of owner shall be reclaimed by said owner or approved family member, friend no later than the 10th day of the removal of animal and all impound fees are paid in full. And Jennifer, is that, oh wait, good, I printed off the next section where we might have changed it. No, I didn't. Uh, is that reading what you expected it to? Because there was one piece that he had kind of left out. Yes, there was, I had a question actually, I'm trying to find the page, not the page animal becomes the property of the city of Alpine and is subject to adoption or euthanasia if the animal is found not to be adoptable. It is the duty of the arresting agency to provide owner information to the animal services officer and to notify animal services the owner being transferred to another facility. And that's why this came in. We had that happen and we weren't getting any information or animal services wasn't. We weren't able to find the owner and we had animals in 2019. And I think this is correct. Does that, did you Anybody else print off the one that Geo did, the real nice one? I didn't bring I, my yeah. yeah, but mine, they well, print off in color. Right oh, well. Look at that section right there, because Geo had put one section in and left one line out, and then we added it, and I'm not sure I'm looking at the right one. And that's going to be section 10118F. That whole section, should that whole section have been highlighted? Because I don't think that any of that is in there right now, right? No, it was funny. Two lines were in it and we couldn't two figure out. Two lines were in it. Yeah, two, two okay. sentences were in it. We were like, well, how did two sentences get in it through okay. first reading and not through second reading? Okay. I don't know. I mean, they're like And we didn't have enough historical notes to know how it happened. And then the pandemic hit, so everything went to food. There's a lot more to it. Okay, is that just... Just the, but he has just a highlight. All right, let's see if it reads the same. Yeah, what was in it was the first sentence, any yeah. animal removed, and the notice. Notice will be sent by certified mail during the 10 day period to the last known address with the intention that the animal will become property of the city and is subject to adoption or euthanasia if animal is found not to be adoptable. It is the duty of all agencies involved to provide owner information to the animal services officer and all that. It took well, the middle. Yeah, it's just the middle one in there. If not reclaimed after the 10th day of impoundment, the animal becomes the property of the city of Alpine and is subject to adoption or euthanasia if the animal is found not to be adoptable. It is the duty of the arresting agency to provide owner information. Are we saying that twice? Yes, okay, we've got a repeat. It is the duty of the arresting agency to provide owner information. That is a repeat to the very last line. So we would need to strike that because it's already in there. Does that make sense to everybody? Mm -hmm. So the only thing that wasn't in the existing ordinance is if not reclaimed after the 10th day of impoundment, the animal becomes the property of city of Alpine and is subject to adoption or euthanasia. So that's the only thing we're adding. What is the proof of approval? What, what do they need to prove that they can get that animal out of impound? I point to the go. The, wait, the proof of approval. Yeah. So we send a certified letter stating that they have 10 days to come and reclaim their animal, whether it's themselves or a family member. 
And how do you're saying how do they how know, do they prove, you know how, that they, they're like no incidents where that guy came in and got somebody else's pet and tried to want you to say where they adopted their oh oh so typically when we um when we're we were involved in going and assisting with the um the officers we we know who who the owner is we're, mm -hmm. we're we're assisting that the owner because they've either had a medical emergency in their home so we're pulling an animal from the the owner's home okay. or we're pulling the animal from the owner's uh vehicle or or something like that so there's not ever a question you know who made the owner really who the owner is and what happened in 2019 is whoever it was an arrest and they were transferred off to another facility <laughs> And nearly immediately nearly immediately that one, yeah. yeah and we didn't and all have of a sudden y'all had animals yeah <laughs> and we didn't know who to contact and we need it and we really need a, an yeah. end you know an end point to this we can't hold an animal for months or years just because you know we just can't we don't know mm -hmm. it's not fair to the animal it's either. really not no. it's just talk about the five freedoms uh, so that's where we got the 10th day of impoundment becomes the property so that we could adopt them out or euthanize. And in this case, it was adopted, if I remember right. Think, think. So we're only putting that sentence in because somehow miraculously through the first reading, it got in, but the sentence didn't. Uh, do I hear a motion to add that sentence? Yeah, motion to put that sentence in. Huh? Motion to put that sentence in. <laughs> so, do I hear a second? Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Same sign. All right. Do we know if Gio's taking minutes? Yes, he is. Okay, good. Gio, wherever you are. <laughs> He's on this. Okay. Next is we need to be looking at the new state law on tethering. And I went through kind of looking at that fancy, fancy one, um, whatever that section was, section E, and asked myself what's different in here. And first in 1060A, uh, we already, and, and I gotta hand it to the city of Alpine, they had really good tethering rules here. But I added, uh, is a chain, okay. To tether an animal with a tether that is a chain has weights attached, the tether must be equipped with swivel ends, which are not work, which is not also attached to a pulley or a trolley. And the only wording there is about the chain or weights. I never knew you could put a chain, a weight on the chain, but I guess you could. So that's 1060 A1 needs to be updated. And then more. Uh, the unlawful restraint of a dog. Uh, the state law puts in there that the restraint of each dog that is in violation is a separate offense. So I added that language and that was not in ours. Um, in that same area, in that same first reading in 2019, we had already added um, B, C, 1. In the case of this section being violated, animal services officer has the right to remove the animal from the owner's property without a seizure warrant. And this is in case of extreme weather. A uh, hurricane, tropical storm, or tornado, tornado warning has been issued. Uh, this was in the state law. We already had it in our first reading, and this is just to add it completely. And that's highlighted. And last but not least was uh, an offense under this section is class C misdemeanor, except that the offense is a class B misdemeanor if the person has previously been convicted under this section. And if the conduct consulting an offense under this section also constitutes an offense under any other law, the actor may be prosecuted. And we also were gonna change just a couple of the definitions uh, we're adding uh, adequate shelter. It means a sturdy structure that provides the dog protection from inclement weather with dimensions that allow the dog while in the shelter to stand erect, sit, turn around and lie down in a normal position. For the animal shelter? Is that one shelter per animal unit? We don't, we don't say that. One dog per house? Yeah, I mean, we don't say that. We could. What do y'all think? Depends on the size of the house. Yeah. If they're small dogs, they can get in one yeah. house and get some body heat. But the other thing that bothers me, and I don't know that that could be put in here, but the placement 
of the shelter. Mm -hmm. I don't mm -hmm. know how many dog houses I've seen that have the opening right in the center, which is not good. Facing, facing north. north. Yeah. Or yeah. conversely, south or something, you know, and people are just like, oh, they got something. Well, there the dog is, and it's pit bull with no hair <laughs> in the north wind. And even if you do have blankets and stuff in there, don't we say it has to be solid somewhere? Yeah, so I'm trying to pull it Yeah, I think there's something about the type of doghouse, not that. which way it's faced, but the type. So there's a, it should be under keeping of animals, the standards for requirements for outside dogs. Um, and so that, that actually goes into a lot more detail. It's not in your packet, it's actually on our inner city okay. ordinances. Okay. Um, it's under 10-41. Um, and so it says that a dog house or other uh, building or shelter for a dog must have a waterproof top, bottom, and sides, have an opening on no more than one side that allows the dog to remain dry and provides adequate shade during the day, daylight hours and prevent overheating and discomfort in, uh, to the dog, um, have a floor that is level and dry, be free from cracks, depressions, and rough areas that might be conducive to in insects, parasites, and pests, be adequate size to allow the dog to stand erect with the dog's head up, to turn around easy and sit, down, sit and lie down in a comfortable and normal position, have sufficient clean and dry bedding material or other means of protection from the weather that will allow the dog to retain body heat when the weather is cold, uh, colder than the, uh, what a dog of that breed and condition can tolerate, uh, mm -hmm. provide suitable means um, for the prompt elimination of excess liquids, be secure, sound, maintain a good repair and constructed with material that protects the dog from injury and allows the dog in and out. So that's that's what we have right now okay. in that section. And to your point, one per dog? It doesn't say it. I mean, like, like she said, it's, I mean, you can have a little dog, you have like yeah. 50 chihuahuas in one dog house if it's a old mastiff, so I mean. Yeah. Or I had two big dogs and they, they had two houses and they got them the same one together. Oh, yeah. It does say oh. um, the um, it does an owner of a dog commits an offense if the fence yard or other pen or structure um, used um, as the primary living area for the dog to regulate uh, regular eat sleep drink and eliminate is not at least 150 square feet for each dog six months age or older. So it does say structure. Could that also be tied into what we're talking about when we're talking about a dog house? When I think of structure, I think of a kennels automatically. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that might many, need to be specified. Yeah. Not many people around here have their own built outside kennels. Yeah, we, we're just lucky they got a dog house. Oh, right. Yeah. Um, we could revisit that at that particular ordinance uh, at our next meeting and see if we, because this is not in this ordinance, it's in another ordinance. And we could really take a better look at it and see if it really fits all our needs. Yeah. That's all right with you. I was just curious. <laughs> Wish I had all the answers. I <laughs> um, the other thing we talk about in the uh, definitions is harness means a set of straps constructed of nylon, leather, or similar material. Inclement weather, we went ahead and talked about includes rain, hail, sleet, snow, high winds, extreme low temperatures, or extreme high temperatures, and then properly fitted. Uh, means with respect to the collar or harness, a collar or harness that is appropriately sized for the dog based on the dog's measurement and body weight, does not choke the dog or impede the dog's normal breathing or swallowing, and does not cause pain or injury to the dog. Question on that one too. Yes, is, is there I thought a... you might have <laughs> For, I'm sorry. I no, no, I know you're a dog, you did this dog stuff. So, so for the fitted, uh -huh. do we have a... First off, dogs are spelled wrong. I saw that. I just saw it when <laughs> I, I was just, I just noticed that, like, uh, Dossics, dogs. The Dossics. Yeah. So is there a a body chart or anything to show measurements of a dog to say, hey, that dog shouldn't be wearing that? Because I know for us, for collars, it's two fingers. Right. Fit two fingers. Right. It, that's, our, that's our measurement. In other words, with us just saying dog's measurement and body weight, defining that a little bit more true and then with the harnesses i mean you have dogs that are like so sporadic and yeah and, and just crazy that they have those really tight harnesses the, the compression suits to calm them down because of mm -hmm. that I mean, like a thunder shirt yeah so i mean somebody could look at it like wow that's really tight and it's like 
No, it's not really tight. It's just. Well, it's, you know, specifically designed to restrain or control a dog. I think if we go through it in a harness, it may not be tight, but it's sufficient. It's sufficient. Yeah. Uh, the only thing we might be able to have properly fitted, meaning that two fingers can be inserted. Is that what you're thinking between the collar and the dog or? Yeah. Or do you, I mean, we have found in writing ordinances that we can enforce more than what is in the ordinance if we have to, am I right? A little bit more. I mean, if you went out and a dog, uh, it wasn't appropriately sized and it was cutting into its neck. It, I mean, it, we should be able to trust that our officers can use their, you know, their judgment and some and a call like that if they go out there and it's obvious that that dog is not being, you know, the collar is too tight. And it's so we should yeah. be able to, and we can make that comment in our, when we write up a complaint with our citations is that we attempted to put a finger or two in between the collar and the neck and we could not do that. Um, we take a lot of pictures when we go out to something like that. Um, and we do say does not choke the dog or impede the dog's normal breeding and swallowing and does not cause pain or injury like you know a collar that's cutting into a dog's neck yeah but i mean everybody defines it differently i mean yeah i could walk down the street go, you're choking your dog i'm like i'm yeah. just holding a leash and right and you're choking it okay well whatever he's pulling the leash and he's choking himself <laughs> well our, our officers will go out there and take a good hard look yeah. another thing uh, you may not know this and and I, I didn't know until I sat here. Um, you can always do a welfare check on any dog you see. You can call it in to APD and ask for a welfare check. Anybody can, any citizen. So, you know. I trust the officers. I just don't yeah. trust, you know, average Joe Blow or Karen walking down the street and yeah. saying, ooh, you're choking your dog. <laughs> well, then it belongs to the police department after that. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Well, no, I mean, the police would be called because you'd be having an altercation in the middle of the street. Get away from me. Oh, and I also had another question. Uh -huh. It's not highlighted, but it's the next one down under quarantine. Uh huh. First question is, is that quarantine for home quarantine or is that for the, the sending it to the, the pound quarantine? Where are we looking at? Right yeah, one right below pet right animal, below. right below properly fitted in the definition. Page five. Means to place an animal in a secure enclosure which precludes physical contact. That's, with... That should that should mean both. Okay, because because quarantine and home or home or shelter. Because or... I mean, if if it is at the home, we should, you know, we should specify like humane conditions like. But they quarantine. write out what a home quarantine is. Okay. When when they when they find a home quarantine, I mean, it's detailed what has to happen. Okay. Am I right about that? Yes. Okay. We, we actually recently this year um, put together um, an even more detailed form that the owner does have to sign. Yeah. And that's and we can we can uh, deny a home quarantine at any time. We do um, if it's just not going to be sufficient. Is there specifications that are mapped out in the ordinance? Not in the ordinance. I don't think it's in the it's, ordinance. It's process. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Ordinance gives them the right to do things. Process is how they do it. Okay. I don't yeah. know if there's like a readily available thing where you can walk with online or. No, uh, but but they can be educated by the officers pretty well. <laughs> there, there is a, you know, there, there, there should be a section of quarantine. Under, under, the under rabies control. Oh, well, the rabies. Well, no, I don't know what rabies. Maybe it's in the ordinances. Yeah. Yeah. There's a 10 149 is under, is, uh, goes over quarantine. 10 149. Yeah. You can look online anytime to read an ordinance. Okay. Did you know that? I did not. Yeah. Uh, click on the City of Alpine website. Okay. Uh, go to the animal services. No. There, you can either go under animal services or there's a section under. Um, I believe just regular ordinances. Just regular go, go under government. It says code of ordinances. You scroll down and click on it. We're at section 10. Yeah, all of section 10 is oh. us. And usually I have my book with full of them. And I gave up because he went on muni code. And I think I can look it up now. Uh, the last thing was the restraint, a chain, rope, tether, leash, cable, or other device that attaches a dog to a stationary object or trolley system. That's just a definition. That's not an ordinance. And, and also, I had a question about the vaccination part too, uh, where it says, uh, 
Vaccination. Vaccination. The inoculation of an animal, the vaccine is licensed by the United States Department of Agriculture and which is administered by a veterinarian for the purpose of immunizing the animal against rabies. I know a lot of people go down to tractor supply and buy the, the shots. You can't buy rabies. You can't buy rabies. Can't buy rabies. You can buy everything an, else but rabies. An individual such as anyone in this room can go and vaccinate a horse or a goat or whatever for rabies, but you can't do a small animal, a dog or cat. Okay. Uh, ferret, you know, stuff like that. Right. In the, the state of Texas. And the reason for that, I've been told, is that's the proof of the inoculation and it's been maintained for, I believe it's five years. Um, so, I mean, how many people do go to a rabies vaccination clinic? They get a little sheet of paper that says that their animal has been rabies vaccinated and they can't find it when the animal bites someone or whatever. They have to go to the veterinarian who administered it uh, to be able to find that documentation a lot of the time. So um, it, I, it, it doesn't specify right. uh, there as far as vaccination is inoculation of animal with a, va a vaccine that is licensed by the United States Department of Agriculture, but it only specifies about the rabies vaccine being administered by a licensed veterinarian. So that's, I'm not sure that that wording is exact. Exactly right, yeah. And, and the wording up in quarantine, um, we still need to touch on that one okay. as well. And it depends on what kind of quarantine. If it's rabies quarantine, that should be specified right. as to the type of quarantine that you're using. Because if it's a rabies quarantine, it should be, um, which precludes physical contact with any other animal or human, one person. Yeah, one but person. that's what 10.141 says, right? Does 10.141 go into detail on that? Is Was it 10.141? Uh, oh. She knows her numbers. <laughs> she knows her numbers. I hear half of it. It's right in front of me too. So yeah, that helps. So, <laughs> yeah. I mean, as far as that, I mean, quarantine is it's very general in its term. It doesn't say what kind of quarantine. Yeah. But we have an ordinance that goes into yeah, detail. I would, Good. Yeah. There's really, the, I don't really see I mean, I have to reread this, but I don't know if the process of of quarantine is actually specified in our ordinance. Well, why don't we put quarantine and vaccinations on a future agenda item and get into it? Well, the quarantine it, also is there's an option that's given by and it's determined by uh, those rabies authorized individuals um, that determines whether or not that quarantine can be done at home or if it has to be done in a quarantine, a license quarantine facility, which is your place. It may be better outlined, I want to say better outlined in the state law because the state law is so hard to read. Uh, but it may be more specific. The, well, we, the requirements we, may be in there already and it could be a quick right. copy and paste situation. Yeah, we have no problem dealing with pride from the state law. Um, I, I think that they outline it probably uh, pretty good. The mm -hmm. variations come in the city. Yeah. yeah. And we've discussed that one concerning whether an animal bites a human versus animal bites an animal and is placed in quarantine. And the city is the one who has that, that variation for if an animal bites another animal and is placed in such as you, the animal is found to kill a feral cat in its backyard. Mm -hmm. Well, according to the city, if I'm not wrong, that animal, the dog or whatever it was that killed it, um, is placed in quarantine because it it bit and therefore ended up killing. So it's placed in quarantine. And in the state, it's not. Yeah. It's if it bites a human that the animal is How placed we in quarantine. How fix that in the dangerous dog? I don't know. I don't remember that. I know that Jennifer and I have had that discussion. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I thought when we were talking about, you know why we were talking about dangerous dog. Yeah, was, because uh, of that dog yeah. that ate a couple of dogs that killed those cats. Yeah, I thought we really talked through that. I'll have to look again, too. But the quarantine is, there's two different avenues yeah. of what can be, how it can be quarantined. Well, let's put quarantine and vaccination, because I can read vaccination to see it's not quite. Well, the right. only one, only vaccination that's required to be given by a veterinarian is rabies, rabies. to small mm -hmm. animals. Right. Is that, is, I have to reread it again, but is it um, insinuating the other vaccines as well? Well, it, it just uses, it says vaccination means the inoculation of animal with a vaccine. That's a general terminology. Mm -hmm. 
Um, and it says, and which is administered by a veterinarian. Not all vaccines have to be, but it then again states that the purpose of immunizing the animal against rabies. So mm -hmm. I would think that that particular statement is fine. Yeah, yeah. So the last sentence. part. To run on sentence, so it just yeah. makes you feel like well, it's all about rabies. I hate to tell you, but if you start grammar in one of these things, you're going to lose your mind. <laughs> quick <laughs> we've been there <laughs> you need to you need to let grammar go <laughs> that was the same here as like if a if a dog eats a bat or something like that it automatically goes quarantine because i know in houston bats it depends on over, it depends uh, on the dog status of rabies vaccination mm. and then too whether or not that dog how long is a quarantine did the dog get bitten by the bat or did the dog do the biting and the killing? Right. So it's being able to say that the dog got bitten, got bit by the bat, and the bat was able to be tested for rabies and came to be positive for it. And then you have to follow through with what's the rabies vaccination status of the dog, because if the dog never had a rabies vaccination in its life, and that bat came up positive for rabies, the dog is a dead dog, Yeah. unfortunately. Because, I mean, that's, the way the state looks at it. Mm -hmm. And it's sad. Yeah. Well, I think we can revisit both of those sections at a, okay. and, and really we'll dive into we, it. We could spend hours on it and yeah. I'm yeah. gonna have to go in a little bit. Well, we're gonna ask for a motion right now okay. on what we did spend a few minutes <laughs> on. Uh, <laughs> we're, we're now to, uh, we've already passed it on the, <laughs> lost my place. We're now onto restraint with all of the changes that we were talking about. Uh, proposed tethering of animals, unlawful restraint of dog, ordinance 1060. Do I hear a motion for the changes we discussed? I'll make a motion. All right, do I hear a second? All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed, same sign. Okay, motion passes. And next meeting, we uh, just, uh, you know, uh, you know, housework thing is that we do try to have one a quarter. Uh, we can say this one's the court one for the quarter and we can meet again after March at some point and discuss those in detail. Does that sound okay? And I'll we'll come up with a date. And we're always the, is this the second Tuesday? Mm -hmm. It's a Tuesday. That's good. <laughs> it is good. All right, do I hear a motion to adjourn? Yeah. Second. Yeah. Second. Weird. Oh, we don't need one for never mind. <laughs> Thank you, everybody, for your attention. That. And Marianne Vega is sitting right here. Did I did you get introduced? She's she's going to be sitting up here with us after the 15th. Um and you're representing the Humane Society? Yep. Yeah. Replaces Gwen Grimes, who moved away. Did Gwen move? She moved to Fort Worth. Oh.